What's up guys, my name is TechNubber here for Troubleshoot and today I've got a video for you that continues with the new Premiere 14.2 and Venk Beta update that'll soon be rolled out to the main chain. If you don't know already, Adobe Premiere Pro now has an encoding feature that you have software encoding, hardware encoding and now hardware with NVENC acceleration instead of just Intel QuickSync. Now, of course, I have an AMD chip. I used to have an Intel one that worked semi-okay with the hardware acceleration, and I ended up getting much better performance with software only on this AMD chip. With this new NVENC update, times have been slashed to crazy amounts because it can fully utilize a graphics card or two that you have installed as long as they're NVIDIA and they're recently new. Up until this point over here, I've been using a vocoder, which is a drop-in plugin for Premiere Pro that allows you to utilize FFmpeg and NVIDIA's encoding power. Of course, it is third party and it does rely on open source development. Here's the page over here. If you're interested in installing it, make sure to check the description down below. I've also attempted to use Daniel 2's encoder, which you can see over here. An installation for this will also be linked down in the description below. And between these two, I got relatively good performance out of the both of them. Recently, Vocode is running a little bit slower for me, but of course, I'm still getting way better performance out of these two because they utilize my graphics card, at least to some extent, instead of just having it as purely CPU only. Now, of course, I'm not exactly talking about plugins that utilize NVENC or anything like that. I'm talking about the actual encoding. Say that you have a pure video in your timeline and you export it straight from there. It'll take quite a while if you're using software encoding, but if you're using NVENC, that can speed up the process tenfold. So of course, I was tempted enough to go ahead and download the Premiere Pro beta and give it a try. And the results were rather surprising. It was extremely fast using it. So of course, I had to go ahead and take one of my previous videos that I uploaded and render it out multiple times using my vocoder preset, a simple Daniel 2 preset that I threw together. Haven't really been using this because it's a little bit too simplistic for my liking. I like a bit more control, but it is still incredibly easy to use and fast. And of course, I made simple hardware and software encoding settings, which will all be shown on the screen somewhere right about now. So previously, I had Premiere Pro 14.1 installed. 14.2 is the one with the beta with the NVENC encoding in it. And I had a slightly outdated NVIDIA graphics driver. And if you saw Epos Vox's new video talking about this update a little bit, he did mention that one of the new NVIDIA updates has opened up a couple more NVENC slots in our graphics card for consumer use. Instead of two, I think you can have up to three NVENC sessions running at once. Of course, I ran the benchmark with my old NVIDIA driver, NVIDIA 445, 0.75 and I went ahead and downloaded the new one 445.87. These two folders were both rendered using the Premiere Pro 14.2 beta and of course I went back to 14.1 and ran all of the tests again though of course you'll notice that the test underscore hardware encoding isn't here and that's simply because I don't have an Intel chip in my PC. I've got an AMD Ryzen 3900X that doesn't have Intel QuickSync, so I wasn't able to show you QuickSync's hardware acceleration. However, the performance that I got out of Vocoder and Daniel 2 far outweighed that QuickSync encoding anyways. Currently, I've got my settings honed down completely on Vocoder and I'm comfortable with the file size and quality that it pumps out and it works really well on YouTube. Daniel 2 is a little bit too simplistic, so I did end up with larger file sizes. And of course, the software and hardware encoding modes for Premiere Pro I avoided completely due to their speed, and I've just stuck to vocoder and perfected my settings there. So of course, I'll be going ahead and testing the best settings for hardware accelerated encoding using the default new built-in NVENC encoder. And when I get to finding out some good settings, I'll probably have a video linked down below. Anyways, enough with the intro for this video, let's get to some results. So after running the test multiple times, you can see I've got a result for 445.75. This is the new NVENC encoding, the new NVENC encoding with a newer NVIDIA driver, and of course the Premiere Pro 14.1 without this hardware acceleration built into it. And I ended up with quite a few results and I've tried to document them as well as I can, making it nice and simplistic. This file over here will be linked somewhat in the description down below, but I have made it far easier to see exactly what's going on. This page is linked down in the description below. This video over here will be replaced with this video when it eventually goes live. 
This is just a placeholder, a previous video of mine. But if you look down a little bit, you'll see my exact PC setup, as well as a link to user benchmarks, so you know exactly what I'm running and where they land up. So 1080 Ti, 1080, my CPU, etc, etc. Everything is listed here for you to go ahead and look at. Then scrolling down, I've got all of this information nicely tabulated and easy to read. You can see what encoder it is, where I've uploaded a sample of the video. This YouTube upload link over here is only the first one because the rest of these three are usually very similar. As you can see, the file sizes are almost exactly the same. Same with the bitrate, you wouldn't be able to tell a difference. So I've just uploaded the first copy that came out from all of them. This video is also public on my channel and the public one that I uploaded a couple of days ago was created using a vocoder. So it would be this one over here, test vocoder H264. And it was this one over here on getting a Valorant key. So of course you're able to go ahead and compare exactly what they look like if you'd like in the description down below afterwards. But with all of this information written down over here, it's very difficult to tell exactly what's going on. So I did create a very nice table using Google Sheets, which is also linked on this page. Heading across to it, you'll see a little bit of information on the right-hand side, see them all tabulated. And over here, you'll see the actual graph itself, which is what we're actually interested in. And of course, at a quick glance, you can already see exactly what is going on here. This luckily doesn't require much explanation because it's so simple to see and understand. Vocoder NVENC, this is what I usually render with over here. Vocoder libx264 is the software encoding mode of Vocoder. H264 software is the built-in encoder inside of Premiere Pro that uses just your CPU. Usually this Vocoder performs quite a bit better than this, but I'm not exactly sure why they're on the same level. As I said, it's been performing a little bit worse for me recently, but that's probably just Windows gunking up from all of the use. A clean reinstall would probably bring these back down to really short times. Then of course we have Synergy H264, which was the Daniel 2 plugin that I mentioned earlier that comes out around four minutes. Vocoder came around seven or eight minutes. The H264 software only encoding came around seven minutes, but the brand new NVENC hardware encoding mode came out to about three minutes and 10 seconds. So this video that they were all pumping out was seven minutes and 58 seconds long. When it came to Vocoder, the performance over here was somewhere around real time H.264 was slightly faster than real time, Synergy was about half real time, and H.264 was probably around a quarter of real time, which was actually really good and really surprising, meaning that this is probably going to be the best way for you to export video from Premiere Pro. As for quality, they're all basically the same. There's no real comparison between them. As for file size difference between the software and hardware in Vank mode inside of Premiere Pro, the file size came out to basically the same, somewhere around 800 megabytes, not exactly sure what happened here, but they all came out to about the same, meaning that Adobe have probably done a really good job of integrating NVENC with their encoding process, and it doesn't seem to lose any quality at all. That being said, if you'd like a deeper dive into the information and what's available here, Heading across to this link in the description again, you'll find each test and their results down here, and you'll see three or two of these long links, and these long links will take you across to a media info export page, where you can see exactly everything about these files without actually having to download them. Opening up multiple links, you can directly compare them. So say I want to compare Synergy H.264 with the newer graphics driver, to say the new NVENC hardware encoding mode, with the new graphics driver, I can go ahead and directly compare them side by side if I wanted. Here you can see the exact differences and what has changed between them. The bit rates and things like that were told to be set to the same target bit rate of about 50 megabits per second. So the differences here all came out to what the encoder chose as best. Because it's not super high motion content, it's a slow tutorial that mostly consists of frames that sit still. This will of course be very different for you if you're going to render out gameplay or fast moving video footage. But either way, those are the results that I came out to. And as far as I can see, the new hardware encoding mode is absolutely incredible. And I'd highly recommend you go ahead and try it out. As I mentioned earlier, if I do find great settings for this that work really well with YouTube, I'll make sure to leave a comment or something in the description down below or comments that you can go ahead and have a look at. If you're watching this sometime in the future, it'll take me a while to play around with it and find exactly what works best. This was using a 1080 Ti. I have no idea what using a 20 series graphics card would do 
or even something more in the future. But either ways, that's about it. This page is linked in the description down below. This video will be different over here. This will be this video. <laughs> and hopefully this will point you in the right direction. If you're confused with how to get this new beta, there's another video linked in the description down below that will show you a step-by-step -step process of installing it. And of course, if you're interested in trying a vocoder or Daniel 2, they're linked on this page over here, as well as in the description down below. Either way, there's a bunch of links everywhere. It's going to be a bit confusing, but when you get to the right place, you'll get to the right place. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Tech Number here for Troubleshoot. Make sure to leave your comments down below. I'm interested in reading them and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.